Hello and welcome to VCC TV. This is Joseph Rai. This year has been a year of surprises. First the Brexit, Trump, the demonetization, and now earlier today, the Reserve Bank of India, or rather, all the six members of the Monetary Policy Committee decided to keep the key policy rate unchanged at 6.25%. To discuss that, we have with us Aman Malik, Excuse Senior me. Assistant Editor. So tell us, RBI decided to keep its repo rate at 6.25% as opposed to the wider expectation that there would be a rate cut given the cash shortage and demonetization. How do you read that? Well, I mean, like you said in your, in your, in your intro, it is, has been a year of surprises and today was actually probably a all of, everybody who you had spoken to before today was expecting that there would at least be a 0.25% percentage point uh, rate cut or 25 basis point rate cut. Um, now what has happened, what the RBI says is that look, we understand that demonetization has happened, we understand that inflation has eased. But what they say is that we don't actually have enough data to try and gauge what has been the actual impact of demonetization. Okay. They say that in a gross value, uh, added on a GVA basis, gross value added basis, that then they have scaled down their growth expectations from uh, to about 7.1 percent. But they say that we still don't have enough data to actually gauge the complete, uh, uh, you know, uh, over uh, a fallout of demonetization, which is why they say that they want to sort of have a wait and watch approach right now. Mm -hmm. And their view has been echoed by uh, Arvind Subramanian, the uh, chief economic advisor as well. Okay. So that is the RBI's rationale. Uh, in so far as inflation is concerned, they, this, they, they concede that, uh, you know, food inflation in various ways has come down. But uh, when it comes to non-food inflation, some areas have hardened. And now crude prices, uh, you know, are likely to inch up. They've already gone up about 15% after uh, the OPEC. The oil countries lobby essentially decided to cut back on their production. So if that happens, India, since it's a net importer of, you know, 80% of its energy needs are met by, crude needs are met by imports. Uh, India is likely uh, to sort of, uh, you know, it ha likely, it's likely to have a negative bearing on India. Therefore, they have factored that in, it's likely to have an inflationary impact. Okay. Uh, the other thing that they have factored in is uh, uh, the possible uh, US, uh, Federal Reserve uh, decision that's likely to come uh, later this month, in which after about after all, more than a decade, the Fed is likely to uh, raise its interest rates, which will see a flight of capital from India. So that's also a consideration. Okay. So these are is this is essentially their rationale for uh, waiting and watching for the moment. Okay, so on November eighth, Narendra Modi announced that there's going to be a demonetization or the high value notes and it will be withdrawn. That's right. But we've not heard much from the RBI governor, Urjit Patel. So what do we get in a, from this in the monetary policy review? Do we learn something more about and what he thinks about the demonetization? Look, unlike his predecessor, Raghunam Rajan, uh, Patel is a very reticent person. He will not talk out of turn. We actually are not any more uh, knowledgeable today after his press conference than we were earlier. He had made one statement before this on demonetization. He made a, you know, said some very similar things today. Mm -hmm. What we do know is that out of the 14 point, uh, almost 14.2 lakh crores of currency that was sucked out of the system, 11.55 lakh crores has already come back into the system, which basically means, and we still have about 20 odd days to go before 30th December, which basically means what? It means that insofar as it was an exercise in getting black money out of the system, I mean, it has kind of failed either because people have laundered enough money, their money very successfully, or there wasn't that much cash by way of black money and people had already converted it into other assets like gold and real estate and stuff, or maybe shipped it abroad. Mm -hmm. So that aspect has failed, which is why, you know, the government has shifted its stance and, and, and even the RBI shifted its stance from uh, curbing black money to the exercise being, you know, an exercise in, to, in promoting cashless economy, etc. That that whole narrative has shifted. Mm -hmm. Now that is that essentially means that the basic function, the basic reason why they have done it in the past has failed. So Urjit Patel really didn't say very much, except to say that look, or the RBI, I mean, not just Patel, there were other RBI mm -hmm. di directors as well, except that to say that look, uh, you know, it was not a decision taken in haste and they were prepared for it. But frankly, that is also not something that one can uh, really gauge by their level of preparedness. 
I mean, you still have currency shortages more than a month after uh, the RBI or almost a month after the RBI, uh, uh, the government essentially announced the decision. So I will take whatever Rujit Patel and his colleagues said today or have been saying in the past since then with a, with not just a pinch of salt, but I'll probably take it with a teaspoonful of salt. Okay. So now uh, RBI has concer expressed concerns about an economic growth. At the same time, it has also raised concerns about inflationary expectations. Yes. So now, how do we read the RBI's and the guidance and what do you think it could do now? I, I, with my limited understanding, I think it's a very confused guidance. Okay. Honestly speaking, I don't think the RBI seems to have a clear hold on what they intend to do going forward. I think they're taking it by the day. I mean, again, if, if I come back to demonetization, the level of preparedness was such that, you know, they were changing rules practically every three hours. We, that some people have done these stories on the fact that the rules were changed more than 20 times in a, sp in the, in a span of 20 odd days, which is frankly ridiculous. So, uh, I think the next stage that the RBI will, the next thing that the RBI will watch is uh, what the US Fed does and if it does raise its interest rates, the impact it will have. If the Fed raises its interest rates, expect a flight of capital, expect the rupee to sort of be under pressure. Okay. Now, the RBI will have to do a stabilizing act over there. So my expectation is they haven't done it this far, uh, this time. Now, if the Fed raises its interest rates and if uh, inflation, keep, you know, sort of com comes down and economic activity keeps slowing or does not pick up or shows no signs of picking up, I expect at least a 25 basis points uh, rate cut uh, in February. But well, you never know. I mean, they've surprised us this time. They could surprise us. But my, I will still be putting my 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 money on an RBI rate cut. Means that we'll have to brace for more surprises. We'll have to, and you know that will also yeah. be closer to budget. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, it'll be it'll be good for the government. Uh, it, they'll probably be in sync. If they cut it, there'll be this feel good factor, and then the government can actually do some, uh, you know, also sort of cut on the other end. They can cut uh, income tax rates, etc., uh, direct taxes. That is mm -hmm. both for individuals and for uh, for corporates, especially after demonetization. So this whole atmosphere of if I, I don't call it gloom, but this negative atmosphere that's built up in the country, they could sort of change that. All right. So a lot of kind of confusing. But I will say one okay. thing before we close. Okay. That the the monetary policy committee was being accused of sort of you know pandering to the industry mm -hmm. when they cut interest rates the first time around. Uh, I think at least they have shown that they do have a spine and that they're not going to sort of pander to the industry or the government's view, and they have a view of their own. Indeed, and the monetary policy has a view of their own, but I think we'll have to brace for more surprises. Thank you so much for watching PCC TV.